Hello everyone, we are the Week 17 Reporters and we are going to discuss the flash fiction, speculative literature, and the graphic novel under the 21st century Philippine literature. So the flash fiction will be discussed by Maisel de Guzman and Nestle Carlos. The speculative literature will be discussed by Vina Andrea Biglangawa. The graphic novel will be discussed by Roxanne de la Cruz and Marco de Lee. So let's start with this discussion. Hi, my name is Nasty Carlos and I will discuss to you what is flash fiction. So what is flash fiction? Flash fiction is a genre of fiction defined as a very short story. While there is no set word count that separate flash fiction from more like traditional short stories. Flash fiction story can be as short as few words, while short stories typically run for several pages. Flash fiction is also known as sudden fiction, short short stories, microfiction, or, or micro stories. Flash fiction is a favorite genre among the English speaking world's most celebrated writers for its ability to convey deep truths and universal human emotion in just a few short paragraphs. When done well, flash fiction can convey deep truths and resonate with readers from all walks of life. You may confuse what is the difference of the short story and flash fiction. Well, the main difference between a short story and flash fiction is their length. A short story is longer, has more details, characters, and a plot development. On the other hand, flash fiction is super short, often just a few hundred words, and focuses on telling a complete story in a brief and concise manner. It's like a tiny snapshot of a story instead of a full-length truth. So there are three characteristics of flash fiction. To tell a great story in such a low word count, your flash fiction stories need a few key components. So flash fiction story shares a number of common, common characteristics. Number one is brevity. Flash fiction compresses an ent entire story into space a few of a few paragraphs. There is no uh, the not defined word count for flash fiction, but some commonly used word limits in flash fiction range from just six words on the short end to 1,000 words on the longer end. So your prose should be tight. This means using the active voice instead of the passive voice. It means leaving off unnecessary words, especially adverbs. Focus on using power verbs to create an image in the reader's mind. Great flash fiction also need to begin right in the action. You need to elimin eliminate as much as necessary background information as possible. Next is a complete plot. A flash fiction story is in a story with a beginning, middle, and end. This set is apart from a prose poem or beginning which can explore an emotion, memory, or thought with a plot. Meaning that no matter how short, flash fiction stories still contain the main elements of the plot. There is a beginning, a middle, and of course, the story must be finished by the end in order to be true flash fiction. Next is surprise. Great flash fiction often incorporates surprise usually in the form of a twist ending or an unexpected last line. The aim is to, to brought the reader to think deeply about the true meaning of the story. And also, it's recommended to show or don't tell. It's one of the those writing rules that applies to everything from a short story to an epic novel to, or to a personal essay. But it's even more special in flash fiction story. Using strong descriptive verbs and engaging the five senses are how you will make an emotional impact on your readers. So now, after now we know the, what, what is flash fiction, let, let's now begin to know what is the origin of the flash fiction. Flash fiction dates back to the time of fables and parables. The form was popularized in the 19th century by writers like Walt Whitman, 
Kate Chaplin and Ambrose Bierce. Perhaps the best known flash fiction is story is from this time, although frequently misattributed to Ernest Hemingway. The entire story is six words long, for sale, baby shoes never worn. The amount of emotion packed into these words inspired many writers to try their, their hand at the genre. The 8th, 1980s, Robert Shepard and James Thomas published a set of anthologies of flash fiction called Sudden Fiction, which were another resurgence, resurgence of the firm. Another highly influential anthology was Flash Fiction, published in 1992 by W.W. W. Norton. It features 72 flash fiction stories and was edited by Thomas Zuka, Dennis Thomas, and James Thomas. Well-known contemporary flash fiction writers include Lydia Davis, George Sanders, Jamaica King Cole, Joy Williams, and Stuart Tate. The next is the six steps on how to write flash fiction. Writing flash fiction can be an exercise in creative restraint, whether you intend your work for publication or just an exercise. Here's a quick guide on how to get started. So the first is use strong imagery. Make every single word count. Help your readers visualize as much as, as, as possible. Utilize vivid and powerful description to engage readers and create a, last, a lasting mental picture. Ensuring each word contributes to the overall impact. Two is stick to one moment. Focus on one particular moment in time. Don't try to to cram in one, in more than one scene into a piece of flash fiction. Focus on a singular moment in time to maintain clarity and depth, avoiding the temptation to include multiple scenes that might be better suited for long formats. Next is work with just one or two characters. Don't spread your story to thin. If you find yourself needing more than two characters or two scenes, your story may be better suited to the short story format. Keep the narrative concentrated by limiting the numbers of characters, ensuring a stronger connection and preventing the story from becoming too complex for flash fiction format. Next is try first person point of view. This, this will create an instant connection to the reader and allow you to express more in your words. Next, it's surprise your reader. Make sure to end your story on a different emotional note than the ones you started on. Creating surprise is what flash fiction is all about. Take the journey, uh, take uh, take the reader on a journey, no matter how short. Next is make good use of your title. When you have so few words to work with, your title can be, can pack a punch. Given the limited word count, the title becomes a powerful tool, craft titles that enhance story impact, serving as a concise yet compelling and entry point for the reader. Good afternoon everyone, I'm Nizel B. De Guzman. So we all learn about flash fiction definition and etc. I will be presenting an overview of the short story, Mateus Notebook by Prospero E. Fulma Jr. Mateus Notebook is a 2010 short story by Prospero E. Fulma Jr. We have uh, information about the author, Prospero Fulma Jr. He's a notable author from the Philippines. He recognized for crafting masterpieces in English language, particularly flash fiction and poetry. We set the stage for a brief reading experience of 5 to 10 minutes and we introduce the key character, Mateo, a grocery owner and unnamed girl. I provide a summary of Mateo's notebook. It revolves around Mateo, a grocery owner in a humble area, facing financial struggles. He declines credits to the starving girl only to later discover the tragic outcome, her family, including her, dead to extreme hunger. This deeply affect Mateo, leading him to forgive their death. We delve into the theme and interpretation. 
what's saddening about this flash fiction is the death because of uh, hunger seems to be normalized which it should not be and our interpretation is um, um, although this story is work of fiction it is also alarming that we may see or encounter the same scenario in our present society with a high number of poverty stricken individuals and families here in philippines next we have listicia by prospero e fulma jr from 2015 the reading time 5 to 10 minutes and we introduce character first justin act as an executioner for those guilty of the deadly sins next is listicia initially a mysterious supporting character later revealed as deadly beast and Sika, a beast employed by Justin for execution. In the summary of Lustitia, Justin the executioner target individuals guilty for the seven deadly sins. However, as the list of sinners diminishes, Justin realizes he is the last one on the list. In a shocking twist, Lustitia transforms into a deadly beast, revealing her connection to Sika and kill Justin. In terms of interpretation, the story utilizes symbolism to convey that those who perceive themselves as superior or holier, it symbolized by Justin. It can fall into the same sins they condemn in others. It serves as a powerful reminder of the human tendency to overlook personal faults while condemning others. Hello everyone, my name is Vina and I will be discussing to you the speculative literature. So let's move forward to our discussion. So speculative literature is a form of non-realist writing with features distinct from science fiction or other genres. So speculative literature is like a broad umbrella um, category of fiction that encompasses all the genres that deliberately depart from realism or from strictly imitating ordinary reality, instead presenting supernatural, futuristic, and other high imaginative realms. So speculative literature, these are written or published works that is far away from reality, or in other term, non-realist. It is comes from the imagination of the writers, or also inspired from myths, legends, or some folklore. So speculative literature have a world filled with supernatural or futuristic possibilities, such as magic, time travel, sentient machine, virtual reality, zombies, apocalypse, and so many more. So speculative fiction is genre of writing what allows for limitless possibilities so whatever the setting the story in this genre are driven by curiosity and possibilities of what could be so what could be tomorrow be like or what the mythic past of our imagine imagination actually is now we have the origins of speculative literature so writers have written about hypothetical events for centuries Speculative fiction date back to ancient Greece when playwrights like Euripides explored alternate version of truth. So, for example, in Medea, Euripides speculated a world in which a shamanist killed her own children rather than them being killed by the Corinthians. The term speculative fiction was used for the first time by Robert Hayley in 1947. The term was largely associated with only the science fiction genre in the late 20th century. A science fiction is a widely read genre that contains speculative elements. The term expanded in the 21st century to encompass more subgenres beyond just science fiction, like fantasy and dystopian literature. Today, speculative fiction is a blanket term for the stories that take place beyond our known world.
Now let's move forward to this um, writer, which is Dean Francis Alfar. So Dean Francis Alfar is known as the father of 21st century Philippine literature. So um, he was born on January 2, 1969. So he is a Filipino playwright, a novelist, and a writer of speculative fiction. So he had written many award-winning speculative fiction, books, and short stories, and edited a number of fantasy and horror anthology. So these are the list of his works. So these are some. So first, he have the Salamanca, Ateneo Press, 2006. Second one, The Kite of the Stars and Other Stories, Anvil Publishing, 2007. And lastly, How to, Traver How to Traverse Terra Incognita, Fist Print, 2014. Now, let's move forward to the subgenres of speculative literature. So first, we have science fictions. So these are stories with imagined technology that don't exist in the real world, like time travel, aliens, and robots. So example of these are Halo, Godzilla, and Transformers. The second one, we have sci fantasy fiction. So this subgenre of speculative fictions are stories that is inspired by mythology, folklore, and fairy tales that combine imagined technologies with elements of magical realism. So example of these are The Lord of Rings, Harry Potter, and Percy Jackson and the Olympians. Next, we have Supernatural Fiction. It is a sci-fi story about secret knowledge or hidden abilities including witchcraft, spiritualists, and psychic abilities. Then we have space opera fiction. It is a play on term soap opera. So it is a sci-fi story that take place in the outer space and center around conflict, romance, and adventure. So example of this genre is Dune, Star Wars, and Starship Troopers. Then we have urban fantasy fiction. So it is a fantasy story that take place in an urban setting in the real world but operate under magical rules. So example of these are American Gods, War of Oaks, and City of Bones. So let's move forward to utopia fiction. So utopia fictions are stories about civilization that authors deem to be perfect. So these are ideal societies. So example of these are Looking Backward, Brave New World, and The Giver. So next we have these utopian fictions. So these are stories about societies deemed problematic within the world of novel. So often satirizing government rules, poverty, and oppression. So example of these are the Last U.S., The Hunger Games, and The Clockwork Orange. So, we have apocalyptic fiction. Apocalyptic fiction are stories that take place before and during a huge disaster that wipes out a significant portion of the world's population. In this subgenre, the story is centered around characters doing everything they can do to stay alive. So, for example, running from zombie or trying to avoid a deadly plague. So example of these are The Road, Station Eleven, and The Stunt. And we have post-apocalyptic fiction. So these are stories that take place after an apocalyptic event and focus on the survivors figuring out how to navigate their new circumstances. So for example, emerging after a global nuclear holocaust or surviving a total breakout society. So, for example, we have the last man. We have alternate history fiction. So these are stories that focus on the historical events but are written as if they unfolded with different outcomes. 
Example of these are The Gate of Time and The Man in the High Castle. So lastly, we have superhero fiction. So more of you are familiar with these. So these are stories about superheroes and how they use their abilities to fight super villains. So example of these are Batman, Spider-Man, and Superman. So these are all the subgenres of speculative fiction. So after discussing to you what is speculative fiction, so now let's move forward to some of our example. So first we have Keeping Time. The author of this um, work is F.H. Patakan and it is published in the year 2007. We have Salamanca. The author of this work is Dean Francis Alfar and it is published in the year 2006. So that's all for my report. Thank you for listening. Let's move to the next part of the discussion, which is the graphic novels. Contrary to popular belief, reading books with pictures in them isn't something we have to stop after the age of 10. In fact, many teenagers and adults have discovered they like graphic novels and they have pictures taking up every page. Graphic novel is a format not a genre. It describes how a book's content is put together. A graphic novel is a longer work or collection of works presented in comic style. Later on, we will going to differentiate the difference between the comics and graphic novels. These have existed as an art form arguably from the time our species learned how to paint. However, the term has only been in use since the year of 1960s. A graphic novel is characterized by following narrative structures such as beginning, middle, and end. A central narrative, complex characters, character development, thematic messaging, precise, carefully considered dialogue, and panel illustrations that tells a story. Graphic novels use their images to do the vast majority of the storytelling. Otherwise, graphic novels shares many of the same elements of traditional narratives. Graphic novels use images, dialogues, and narration to develop the themes or ideas. Graphic novels in include elements of both print and visuals in the creations of character that move through the narrative within the sequential art panels that show the action and characterization that help establish the tone and the mood. They have defined central plotline with a beginning, middle, and end. Authors include different kind of characters and develop these characters through the story. The graphic novel's origin. Graphic novels have a long history so their origins are open to debate. Many trace the first stories told through illustration back to cave paintings or the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics. The term, um, the term graphic novel became popular after the publication of Phil Eisner's A Contract with God and Other Tenement Stories, a graphic novel. It is used to describe novel-length works written in comic book styles using panels, images, speech bubbles, and narration boxes to tell the story. The publication of Phil Eisner helped popularize the term graphic novel and the genre boom in American literature in the mid 1980s. Three work dominated the genre, namely Frank Miller, Alan Moore, and Art Spiegelman, all helped to revolutionize graphic novels. As critics began to see the graphic novels as a serious genre tackling serious content, the popularity of the graphic novel inspired collaboration amongst authors and artists. What is the origin of graphic novels here in the Philippines? So, during the World War II, Americans brought comic books with them for entertainment. After the war, Filipino publishers began to publish material in the serialized comic book format and later on improved into graphic novels. Mars Ravello created a number of Filipino superheroes, several of which had been adapted to multiple um, films and television stories. Graphic novels have evolved quickly since their origination. New digital formats and technology have allowed many artists to expand on their techniques, creating a wider variety of art-like traditional novels. 
There are endless ways to categorize different graphic novels. There are as many genres and subgenres as in traditional fiction and nonfiction. The following are only a few of the most predominant categories. And the first one here is manga. Manga is the Japanese word for comic, but in the U.S. is used to describe Japanese-style comics. Though technically manga refers to Japanese comics, many think that manga refers to a style rather than the country of origin. The second one is superhero story. Superhero graphic novels have taken the most popular form of comics and turned what were once brief episodic adventure into epic sagas. Superhero comics are dominated by a few mainstream publishers. The third one is personal narratives or persins. These are autobiographical stories written from the author's personal experiences, opinions, and observations. The fourth one is nonfiction. This, um, these are similar to persins in that they are written from the author's personal experience, but the author is generally using their own experience to touch upon a greater social issues. And the last one on superhero stories, graphic novels featuring protagonists without superhuman abilities. This category covers the wide variety of fictional storyline possibilities. Plots may be comedic or serious in nature. Characteristics of graphic novels. So most graphic novels have similar characteristics that includes the first one, use of dialogue bubbles and narration boxes to, in, to help move the plot forward. The second is images and graphic designs that portray the story. Images help a lot especially in our imaginations or how it actually looks like. The third one is frequent use of onomatopoeia. They use the, li the literal sound of things such as tick-tock, tick-tock, books, splash, and many more. And lastly, plots that can stand alone. Let's proceed to the differences between a graphic novel and comics. Length. Comic strips in the newspaper are usually about one to four cells. The plastic sheet comic books at the bookstore are typically around 20 to 24 pages, while in the graphic novels are much longer though there's no set of length. The next one is ads or advertising. Comic books often have several pages or ads or advertising, while in graphic novels generally do not have any advertising at all. Last is the serial versus anthology. Many of the comics we most readily recognize as serialized, meaning they appear in pieces over a period of time that must be read in sequence in order to get the full story. Graphic novels, on the other hand, are often written as standalone works that have no immediate connection to another graphic novel or comic. Graphic novels can also be anthologies or collections of these former serials and these are sometimes called trade paperbacks or simply trades. Let's proceed to the examples of graphic novels. These are the most popular Filipino graphic novels in the Philippines. First one is Dinoli Metangare published on March 21, 1987, by the one and only Dr. Jose Rizal. Next is the Mythology Class. It was published in 1999 by Arnold Are. Lastly is Trece. It was published on October 22, 2005 by Budget Tan. Next is How Do You Read a Graphic Novel? When you read a graphic novel, you start at the top just like you would when you read a chapter book or a picture book. You read from left to right and top to bottom. There are certain elements in a graphic novel that can help you understand the story as you read. First of all, the layout of a graphic novel is very important. Instead of a long paragraphs of text like a chapter book, graphic novels are laid out in frames. The frames are the individual boxes or segments that contain the illustrations and text. In between the frames are the gutters. The gutters are just the empty spaces that separate the frames. 
when the creator of a graphic novel wants to show dialogue between characters, they use speech bubbles. This is a way to visually show which character is speaking. Thought bubbles are used to show what the character is thinking rather than what they're saying out loud. Sometimes a story calls for some sound effects. Instead of using speech bubbles, the illustrator might use bright colors or fonts to describe what a certain scene might sound like. Other times, a scene might need more explanation than what the characters are saying in their dialogue. The author might choose to add captions to fill in the gaps and help the reader understand what's happening in the story. When you are reading a graphic novel, remember that the creator wants you to enjoy the story. Take your time, look at the pictures and the words, and think about what is happening between the frames.